But you guys got another mini PC review here for you. This is the Azul Elite. This desktop mini PC is quite a popular one and I've reviewed one of these before but not the Elite version. But we're going to take a look at it in more detail and put it through its paces to see why it is popular and see whether there is any flaws with it. So the processor is a Raptor Lake i5 in this version but they do an i3 and an i7 version. We've got 4 gigabytes of RAM on this version, but it does go up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. The storage goes up to 4 terabytes. We've only got 128 in this model. So this is everything you can get inside the box in this particular one. This is what they've sent me. Obviously, this one has a USA plug on it, so I need to use an adapter for this one. Again, we've got a couple of antennas here. These are for the Wi-Fi antennas on this unit. We've got uh, the actual power brick here. Also on a barrel jack here, I'll give you a quick look at the ratings. That's 19 volts, 5 amps, 95 watts on this particular uh, model of power supply. Not sure what the make is, but that is the actual power supply. We've got a thermal pad here and we've got some screws inside here. And there's a little jumper on here in case you want this running all the time. I think these units are designed for thin clients, kiosks, point the cell, uh, IoT and stuff like that. But this is what you can expect to get. We do have our unit right here, which is quite small, size of my hand on the front. We do have that power button here. And I do like the look of this mini PC. On this side here, we do have some ventilation here. And on the other side, we should have some ports. You have some sort of infrared uh, sensor on the front here, maybe for some sort of remote control. On here, we have USB 2.0 ports and USB 3.1 ports. We have a micro SD card slot here and a USB 4 port on here as well, which is Type-C connection. So you have plenty of connectivity on the side of the unit. If you need to plug in uh, external devices, you can do uh, via this method here. There's also a micro SD card there for external storage if you want to. On the back of the actual device, we have those antennas. This is dual band Wi-Fi. On this device, we have two Ethernet ports. One of them is one gigabit and one of them is 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port on here. Also, we've got some ventilation here. We have three uh, HDMI 2.0, not 2.1, 2.0 ports on here. So you can have multiple displays on here, a Kenston lock as well, and that audio input there as well. The device is made of plastic here. On the bottom, it's made of metal. And there's that VES amount here. It doesn't come included. You will have to buy extras for this particular device. But I'll take this apart so you can see inside. Inside, you can see we have a fan here. And these are the screws for the little rubber feet on them. You just have to unscrew these and it will give you access to the bottom here. You have to remove two more screws and it gives you access here. So you can replace this fan and also clean it if you need to uh, at any time. That doesn't look like you can mount any sort of drive inside here. There's not enough room uh, for a drive in here. It did only come with four gigabytes of RAM. They can have up to 64 gigs in here as well but they only sent me a four gigabyte model on one stick of ram which means it's going to run on single channel which is never a good thing so but it will impact performance but that's on them for sending this uh, product for review we have a big copper plate here to cool down the cpu and a nice exhaust here at the back and we also have this is where your drive is your m.2 uh, pci express times four in here as well so we should get reasonably fast speeds from those this is only an 128 gigabyte model they've sent me as well which can have more as i've said there is a sata port and a power port here why that's there i don't know because you can't fit in any sort of drive inside here from where i can see i did try but it, it's a bit too uh, tight there now the price of this mini pc is not cheap once you start specking it out again they do an i3 an i5 and an i7 version you can choose more ram if you wish and more storage but again that will bump the price up and looking at the operating system, you can have no operating system or Windows 11 Pro, and you can go through. What I did notice here, when you come down the list to see the specifications, it doesn't seem to match what is up the top there because these are the 11th generation uh, specs instead of having the uh, 13th gen, which is what the Raptor Lake is. But it's got a total of 12 cores, four performance cores, and eight efficiency cores with total of 16 threads. And the maximum uh, turbo frequency is 4.60 gigahertz with 12 megabytes of Intel smart cache. The graphics and GPU for this is the Intel Iris Xe graphics. 
but you can see here they do supply this amounts but again you have to pay for these as extras as well but when you select the i7 version here with uh, the one terabyte drive and 16 gigabytes of RAM with Windows 11 Pro, that comes in at a whopping £841, which is pretty expensive. So let's uh, see what the actual mini PC can do, and we'll give it some tests to see how it fares. So I'm expecting pretty big things for this little mini PC, so we'll give it a test. I just want to take a look at the About page here. You can see it's a 13th gen inside here, i3. Uh, 1340p version and you can see we've only got installed four gigabytes of ram so i'm not expecting uh, massive uh, performance boosts here with four gigabytes of ram you really want to get more ram inside this system to run windows 11 but this is what they sent me so i'm going to test exactly what they sent me i'm not going to upgrade the memory or anything that's down to them for sending me such a low-end unit but let's go ahead and uh, do the benchmarks 4K streaming, you can see we get a few drop frames at the very beginning and then it stabilizes and I can skip the actual uh, playback here and it plays perfectly fine for 4K uh, streaming. So if you want to do 4K streaming on this device, you can do. Uh, this device does support up to 8K playback, but we're streaming at 4K here and you can see it's having no issues at all streaming at 4K. Once it stabilizes, you should get nice smooth streaming and again, you could use this for a streaming device, play all your movies, or maybe you want to have this as a Plex server uh, where you can use this as the main machine and uh, have your storage on a NAS or something like that where you're reading from that. But I'll quickly skip here and you can see it works perfectly fine. Let's move on to the next test here. I'm going to go into the downloads and do uh, Jellyfish 400 Mbps. We'll open this up with VLC. I did try it with the Windows built-in Windows 1, but it didn't have the codec to support it, so you would have to install that. So this is 400 Mbps, 4K, Ultra HD, 10-bit HEVC. So it's a, a very hard file to play, and a smooth playback here shows you that it can handle this file type with ease. And I'll skip it there, and it picks up very, very quickly. So no problem at all playing these particular types of files with this device. So if that's something that's important to you, then by all means, that will do perfectly fine. Geekbench 6 has 2,021 single core score. Multi-core is 5,089. Moving on to the GPU score for Geekbench 6, it's 9,246 on OpenCL score for this particular mini PC. I did some benchmarks with the Crystal Disk Mark here, 2,284. Uh, reads and writes is 1004 not great to be honest i think you could do better uh, if you had a faster drive in there that doesn't seem to be very good at all on the right side of things if you ask me let's open up cinebench here i did notice some issues on cinebench when i run it the uh, fan started to really kick in it was really getting noisy and i also noticed really high temperatures here under the cpu package also thermal throttling and also we had package ring uh, temperatures rising as well. So it didn't handle with the temperatures very well, but we did get a score of 8,348 on the multi-core. I'm not going to run the single core because it didn't like that particular test. If you want to play games, uh, these little tiny uh, retro games, then yes, you can play retro games on this. I did notice the fan kicking in quite a bit. Uh, on here there was the odd micro stutter here maybe that's because we only had four gigabytes of ram and i do think having that extra ram would have been very useful like 16 gigabytes at least would have been very helpful for this particular type of device now i do want to point out a couple of real negatives for me for this mini pc and one of them is the temperatures it was getting a little bit toasty at times when doing certain things and again if you're doing tasks like this it will get a little bit hot and the temperatures do rise up a little bit. Uh, so it does need a bit better cooling than what is already there, in my personal opinion. If you're going to be using it for gaming or if you're going to be rendering videos and things like that, it may get a little bit too hot. So maybe if you're looking for something that's doing light work, like a bit of streaming, a bit of light office work, then this is going to be ideal. And I think this is where this mini PC is targeted at, as I've mentioned before. Now, plus the price of this is pretty expensive. So if you're looking for a cheaper mini PC, then this is not it because it will cost a fair bit to purchase something like this. Uh, again, there is better options out there for temps, as you've seen on my channel. 
Uh, Midas Forum do a really nice one, which has very low temps, no thermal throttling whatsoever, and probably cheaper than this particular mini PC. So there is ones out there which you can uh, get with uh, better specs and better uh, cooling. Let me know what you think in the comments section. I'll be happy to read your comments. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Bye for now.